excited today to share with you guys my watch collection, my state of the collection. Those of you who have watched my channel, follow my channel, know some of the watches that I have. Um, so it'll be exciting to show you guys what is all in my collection. I'm gonna pour a little bit of whiskey. I got uh, some Centauri with me here today. It's just a classic Centauri whiskey. Toki, nothing too fancy, but just uh, sets the mood right. And uh, so we're gonna drink whiskey, look at some of my collection. So let's get on with it. All right guys, so I just poured myself a glass of Centauri whiskey. Let's uh, take a sip. Mm. Really good, just nice clean taste. It's super light, it's still very flavorful. So I would say it's a good balance and uh, it won't set me back, you know, multiple hundreds of dollars like, uh, like Hibiki will. So it's a good medium. All right, so let's get into the core collection. So these are sort of my daily drivers. These are the watches that I wear the most. So let me hold up my watch roll here. And there you have it, guys. And that's it, that's the end of the video. Just kidding. <laughs> um, so that's, that's my, my core, core collection, and I'll go through each of them one by one. First one I'd like to share with you guys is my Grand Seiko SBGN003. It's a quartz watch, so actually, you know, the power never runs out unless the, unless the battery itself runs out. Uh, but this watch is 39 millimeters, so it wears very nice and light. I have a six and a half inch wrist, so it, it works perfectly for me. And it has a GMT function, so it's super useful. I have a thing for GMTs and divers. For me, a GMT is super useful because when I'm traveling, I just, I hate having to jump the hour backwards or forwards, depending on the time zone I'm in. With the GMT function, screw out the crown in one position, and independently jump the hour hand without stopping the seconds hand and losing any type of accuracy that I've had. Like when I travel home to Chicago, it's definitely really nice to have a GMT watch. I really respect Grand Seiko as a brand. I think they have some of the, the best finishing when it comes to their timepieces. If you look at their handset and the case, there's some very fine polishing there. Grand Seiko calls it the Zeratsu polishing. So you get some really nice light reflections on the case and on the hands, and it's deathly accurate. It has Seiko's 9F86 caliber, which is a crazy accurate movement. Uh, deviates to a few seconds per year. Take another sip, cheers. All right, my next watch is a watch that I just recently did a review on, and I also did a story of how I acquired this. This very hard to come by and rare timepiece. So this is, of course, as if you can't tell already by the black and blue, highly distinct bezel. This is the Batman BLNR 126710. It's one of Rolex's premier sports watches and it's, it's a GMT, GMT Master II. This is the first GMT Master II with a bicolor ceramic or cerachrome bezel. So it's a very special piece for Rolex. And this is their second iteration. So this is what some people call the Batgirl or the Batman of Jubilee. And this one has the updated movement with the caliber 3285 with 70 hours of power reserve. It's a very wearable piece, 40 millimeters in diameter, a 20 millimeter lug width tapering down to a very sultry 16 millimeters. And then of course it has the oyster lock double deployant clasp, which is extremely secure and also features five millimeters of easy easy link on the fly extension so this is super convenient when your wrist swells or it shrinks depending on how hot or cold it is the bezel actually is bi-directional and it'll turn so you can actually track a third time zone if you if you so desire for me i'm usually just tracking two time zones at once max this is also a very slim watch under 12 mil millimeters i think it's 11.8 and it just wears amazing 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 uh, especially on the Jubilee bracelet, just so comfortable. There's so much more ventilation on the Jubilee bracelet due to that five link design. One of the most comfortable watches that I own to wear uh, day to day. And I think suits my six and a half inch wrist a little bit uh, nicer as well. Okay, so my next watch here, let me take another sip. I guess I'm taking a sip for, for each watch that I'm showing you guys. Um, this is, of course, the Rolex Mariner 
What you probably can't readily, at least for most people, recognize at a glance is which model it is. So this is actually the 41 millimeter sub. This is the 126610LN black model with the date. If you've seen the old one, you can see that there's some slight differences. So the 41 millimeter has the more tapered lugs versus the 40 millimeter, which has the fatter lugs, of a more prominent maxi style case. And then the bracelet width on the 41 millimeter is 21, whereas on the older version, it's uh, 20 millimeters. And then another way you can tell is between Swiss and made, there is a crown. And on all the newer Rolex models featuring the 3200 movements, they put that uh, coronet, the Rolex crown in between Swiss and made. So you can distinguish which model it is. So this of course is a stunning watch. It's very classic. You know, its history goes back decades um, from the 1950s. This watch premiered in 1953. So of course this watch has the date on it. I like my watches that have dates on them. It's just much more convenient for me. I know the purists will like the no date sub because it has more symmetry and it goes along with the traditional uh, design ethos of the sub. Now this has the 120 click unidirectional ceramic bezel. Very solid ratcheting action, extremely easy to grip and turn. I use this as a timer when I'm cooking or when I'm tracking how much time has elapsed uh, since I parked my car. This watch also features a glide lock system, which snaps out and allows for, I believe it's 18 millimeters, it could be 20, um, of adjustability and just wears beautifully. It's a hair under 13 mil thick. I think it's about 12, 12.8 or so. And it's definitely a little bit larger on the wrist versus the GMT. All right guys, so now that I've gone through the core collection, I'm gonna show you what's in my less frequently worn collection. Some very cool pieces on this side as well. I'm gonna start with the watch that holds a lot of meaning for me. This is the first mechanical watch that I've ever owned and it is a Seiko 5. Just a very classic bare bones watch by Seiko. Uh, I think it's probably the first timepiece that I've ever owned as well. And this was gifted to me by uh, my, my late grandfather who passed away a few years ago. He gifted me this watch uh, shortly after I joined grad school. And I wore this watch through all my years in grad school and there's still pictures of me wearing this watch. I've had a lot of very meaningful experiences in my life wearing this watch, you know, finishing grad school, uh, finding my first post-grad uh, job. And uh, this watch is, is in his memory. I think he was actually really into watches as well. And I think part of the reason why he gifted me this watch is because of his, his love and his affinity for wristwatches. You know, I wish he was here to see my existing uh, collection today and see how far I've gotten into the collecting hobby. He'd be really happy to see that. It still runs, if you can see the second hand kind of moving along there. But this is a watch that I will never, never part ways with. It means the most to me, actually, out of, out of all my watches. So the next watch is kind of continuation of that Seiko. This is a Seiko Sarb, kind of carrying on the tradition. I know my grandpa would be really happy to see that I purchased another Seiko. This is a Seiko Sarb 033 with the black dial. I put it on this black leather strap to kind of dress it up a little bit. This watch, of course, comes on the bracelet. Um, has that display case back, which is pretty cool. But you can see how lovely this watch looks. Extremely classy. I would wear this with a suit or a, you, you know a tuxedo. I actually don't even own a tux But if I did this is the watch that I'd wear with it and nice and thin nice and small very unassuming Sarb 033 and these watches are Discontinued now, so it's actually kind of getting increasingly harder to find these watches All right, the next watch that I have to show you guys is a Siegel chronograph uh, 1963 this is based off of a chronograph by Siegel back in, you guessed it, 1963. And this is a hand wound chronograph. So you have to wind this, this bad boy up. It features the Siegel movement. There is a pusher at the top here to activate the chronograph. And then you pause it and reset it. One of the coolest things about this watch is the case display case back. I mean, how cool is that? You can see all the little gears and levers, you know, spinning and running, and it's just a whole nother world in there. That's part of the reason why I think watches are so cool, 
and part of the reason why it got into them because there's something really romantic about them. Almost sort of like a lost art that has been able to actually still stay relevant in, in today's world filled with technology and all these devices, we're connected to everything all the time. It's nice to kind of unplug and enjoy a piece of art and, and history and the engineering and the beauty of this traditional lost art. And I think the dial is actually really interesting as well. You can see that there are Chinese characters on there. The piece at the top means 21 jewels and then the bottom means China, Tianjin, where this watch is manufactured. And then there's a nice little red star on there, some gold hour markers, some blue hands, and then that red chronograph. Uh, seconds hand. Perhaps the most understated and the most classic looking piece in my in my entire rotation. This watch is probably mm, like 1 the price of some of my Rolexes. I gotta say, I, I don't enjoy my Rolex Rolexes 20 times more than this watch. You know, you can find simple pleasures at every price point. Last but certainly not least, I have another Seiko. So I have a thing for Seikos. I think Seikos are great. Uh, they're all completely in-house. They're made by one manufacturer. Everything down from the hands, to the hair springs, to the bracelets, to the straps. Everything is made in-house by Seiko and I think there's something really cool about that. It's completely vertically integrated. The final watch that I have to show you is the Seiko Turtle. Now this is the newer Turtle, so it has a ceramic bezel and the Cyclops and Sapphire Crystal as well. Uh, the movement is still the same. I think it's the, yeah, the 4R36. So this watch still has only 48 hours of power reserve. This is kind of like my uh, go-to beater watch if I'm doing anything overly active or rugged. Uh, I've taken surfing lessons before, so if I were to go surfing again, I'd probably put this, strap this watch on. It is a very rugged and handsome timepiece. I think it really looks good on the, uh, the rubber strap and a lot lighter. On, on the bracelet, this watch is definitely a lot chunkier. There's just something really unabashedly cool about it. For those of you who follow my channel, you know, I've, I've reviewed a lot of watches from, you know, Omegas to vintage watches, to Tag Heuer's, to Vostok's, to G-Shock's. I've really run the gamut in terms of my watch collecting journey, but this is kind of where I'm at currently. And it's a really happy place to be. You know, I have my luxury timepieces that are sort of my daily drivers because there's something that I really love about having a luxury timepiece on my wrist. But then I really love, you know, these other timepieces as well um, because there's just something really charming about them. There's merits to both. I, I kind of have like the luxury side and then I have the, the underdogs. I really enjoy each of them, so. With that said, uh, hopefully you guys uh, had fun getting a glimpse into, into my current collection. If you haven't gotten a chance to, smash that like button down below and then also subscribe to my channel for more content. And let me know what else you guys would like to see in future videos as well. Let's take one last salute, cheers. And thanks again for tuning in guys. I will catch you guys soon, cheers. Mm, that's good.